everyone welcome to another stream uh it's been a while i think at least three months uh since my last stream at least my old uh, backer slide said uh january 6th and it is now april 7th uh 2024 and uh yeah i just uh, have had a lot going on these last few months uh, i've been wanting to do like another driving vlog video to give people updates and whatnot but I haven't really been driving too many places or at least not places far enough away to where like I can do some kind of vlog like that. Plus I also want to get some, you know, audio setup changes going like with a portable like mic uh, recorder and stuff like that. But anyway, that's a topic for another day. Um, I figured that I would try to stream today. And since it's been so much, so much time since my last one here, I would try to ease my way in with something I know very, very well. I mean, that's usually what I stream here is stuff I know pretty well, but uh, today we're going to do kind of like a cozy playthrough of Quake for PC. Uh, we're going to be using my favorite source port, which is Quake Spasm. And uh, Quake Spasm is really good if you want to do like aftermarket mods and stuff like that. Like the ones that aren't available in the official id software and night dive re-release of Quake that came out a few years ago. Uh, and there's a lot of, lot of mods for Quake out there, so... But uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be playing on PC. I'm on my actual stream PC right now. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna play this on the nightmare difficulty. Uh, for those of you guys that have been around a while, which is probably all of you, uh, I've you know you know I've covered this game so many times on my channel. I'm not gonna really be saying anything crazy, interesting, or anything like that. I'm just going to be playing through the game, and uh, you know talking to you guys, and uh, you know just talking to myself in the process as well. So. Um, but I see, uh, I see some people out there already in chat. I do have my normal latency on because games like Quake and Doom and whatever can really kill the encoder. So I've got it on the slower latency. So hopefully the encoder can keep up a little bit better and, uh, you know, hopefully it'll provide slightly better video quality on the archive, uh, once this is archived and, and up for people to watch after the fact. So, but I see a uh, Sonka Bonka was out there. They, they posted early. They said, I can't catch Twitch broadcast due to my location and there are no stream recordings. Please stay here. Yeah, I've been streaming a lot on Twitch lately because I just in, ha I've been in like I don't give a crap kind of mode uh, for a variety of different reasons. Uh, some being major, major life changes and, and whatnot. Um, but on Twitch, I actually it's set by default to not archive my streams or at least not publish them publicly. And I always forget to go back and publish them because I, I, I mean, I don't give a crap mood. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm not leaving YouTube or anything like that. I mean, my content has been oh, like, you know, next to nothing for the last few months, but you know, my channel's not going away and I do want to get back to the point where I do streams on a somewhat regular basis. And so here we are, we've, we're going to play some quake. Um, but a blue dragon out there says, hi, we got John Smith back. Welcome back, John Smith. He says, yo, Freddie Voorhees. Good to see you again, man. He says, man, it's been 84 years. Glad to have you back, sir. YouTube. <laughs> and I see Michael out there. He says, how's it going? It's been a while. Um, indeed it has. And I see Scott, what's going on, Scott? Uh, Scott says, yo, welcome all. And we've got cool and unu unusual games. Uh, one of the folks out there, that's actually a regular, uh, on my discord <laughs> so I, I actually talked to him earlier today on discord um internet junkie good to see you again welcome uh and we see i see ben out there as well uh welcome back ben it's been a while uh blue dragon says dual stream to both at the same time no that's that's terrible don't everyone anyone out there that's thinking about streaming or anyone out there that is streaming don't stream to multiple platforms at once it segments your audience it's not a good viewer experience. And you think that you're going to get more viewership in the process, but what ends up happening is I think it actually hurts you. You're better off doing one stream or the other. Like I have Twitch for like after hours stuff, really casual stuff. I mean, even lately earlier this week, I've been streaming straight from my PS5 with like no voice or anything like that. Uh, and I'm just like typing in chat if someone comes in and says hello. Uh, so you know, I'm not going to do that sort of thing on YouTube. I have to have a microphone. I have to have good audio quality. I've got to have good visual quality here. And I put some kind of effort into it, even though it's still bare bones, minimal effort, but still it's got to look, you know, uh, you know, pleasing to the eye here on YouTube. And, uh, uh, whereas on Twitch, it, again, it's an, I don't give a crap mode. So, uh, don't, don't stream to both platforms though. You want to have, you know, just focus on a single platform, like a specific style on a single platform and just go all in on that 
And if you want to do multiple platforms, maybe have a different format on the other one or just whatever. So yeah, that's why I don't do dual streams. Yeah, it's just not a good uh, experience. So, um, but all right, let's, uh, I said uh, all my hellos and stuff like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, load up Quake Spasm. Now, just like uh, with previous Quake streams, uh, I'm going to be using the Quake 2 soundtrack because the original Quake Nine Inch Nails soundtrack gets copyright claimed to hell and back, and I'm not looking to give Trent Reznor uh, any free money. No offense, Trent Reznor. I love you, and I love your music. I'm actually a big Nine Inch Nails fan, but I'm not a fan of getting copyright claims and you know putting in hours of my life to have other people take the money. So not that the money's going to be very big, but you know what I mean. It's the principle. So let's go ahead and jump in here. I did actually sort of rearrange the soundtrack a tiny bit um compared to like what i usually do it as so there we go there's my capture um so for those of you guys that have actually uh watched my previous quake with quake 2 music streams uh you know the arrangement might might be slightly different if, if you're familiar with those old streams i know some of you like to go back and watch my old quake streams in particular so um speaking of quake i actually picked up the sega saturn version again uh, the American version. I picked that up actually late last year. I had some store credit at uh, East Starland and uh, couldn't really find anything to buy. And the game was, I wouldn't say it was super affordable, but it's not like Dragon Force expensive. So I went ahead and grabbed it again and just to have one because I'm a big Quake fan. Um, maybe we'll do another stream of that. Maybe. I mean, like I still have PTSD from that version. Streaming that like seven years ago now. It's, well, probably not seven, but it's probably been like five or six years since I played through it here. Uh, what a nightmare of a stream. No death run per episode? I mean, I'm going to try. I don't usually die that often, Blue Dragon, when I play Quake. I mean, I'm, I'm very experienced with the first Quake. Uh, not to toot my own horn, but it's one of my most played games of all time. So... It's kind of like the Ninja Gaiden or Castlevania of first-person shooters for me, where like I've played it so much that like, I don't even save in this game anymore. I just try to go through every level without, you know, quick save. And we're gonna probably try that. Uh, some of one or two of the episode four levels can still give me some trouble, uh, especially if I'm not like warmed up. But uh, we will see. So let's just go through our options real quick. I do have some stuff set. Nothing uh, too crazy here. Always run is on. Um, I do have, uh, actually, uh, V-Sync turned on, and we're playing at 1080p, and, uh, yeah, usually when I play by myself, I turn V-Sync off, because it's more responsive, uh, it's less laggy, although you will start to see some screen tearing and stuff like that, so, but, uh, uh, Blue Dragon says, I managed to, uh, no death run up to the last secret level in episode four, that lava jump to get to it. Uh, get to it. You know what? The last time we played Quake, I might have, I might have beat the game actually without dying. I'm gonna have to go back and check the archive. I sometimes when I play Quake here, it just happens because, like I said, I I kind of know this game pretty well. So, all right, let's go ahead and do a new game. Um, what I'm gonna do is actually probably just leave the status bar off because we're playing in uh, widescreen. It looks a little goofy here. It doesn't stretch all the way across the screen, and it also kind of like blocks your gun a little bit. Um, well, I don't know. Let's uh, let's get a vote here. Here, let's go to. I haven't done this in a while. Let's do start a poll. Play with status bar on. Um, start poll. That'll make things a little more interesting. So we'll give that a couple minutes. Yeah, no, I totally agree, Blue Dragon. The uh, the Quake Two music is just like a perfect fit for Quake One, honestly. Like, Quake 1 soundtrack I really like, but it's also very atmospheric and whatnot. And, um, you know, when I play a run-and-gun first-person shooter, uh, I want some beats. I want some, like, kicks and snares and, and guitar riffs and stuff like that. And uh, so it fits actually quite well. You know, it's, it's still uh, industrial rock, which kind of fits this sort of industrial aesthetic. So, you know, all like these these metal walls and whatnot, so. Can I set it to the transparent status bar? Uh, it's possible the source port might have it, but I, I don't have it set to that. It actually, actually looks like it is somewhat transparent. I can actually see through it when I'm moving it. Uh, yeah. But I, I like, I like, I actually have it set intentionally to look more like uh, the software renderer mode from back in the day. That's how I prefer to view Quake. 
Um, that's how I prefer to play Quake, so... Um, but it looks like I do still have the status bar somewhat transparent. It's probably gonna be really difficult to see on stream, but I can see it here. Especially when you see, like, this dark part right there. And then the light part. You can, you can see where it goes dark, then light. You can see the candle behind it. There you go. <laughs> kind of cool. Yeah, cool. I mean, almost the same way with uh, with Quake when it first came out. You know, I got this the same year it first came, or the same year it came out, and I was a little disappointed with the soundtrack. Now, the introduction theme is pretty badass. It's got like that energy and edge to it, but then the re most of the rest of the soundtrack is very like subdued and moody and atmospheric. It's you know very few riffs, if if any. Um, so yeah. What are my thoughts on the remake? If you're talking uh, the Night Dive remake, I think it's excellent. I, I highly recommend everybody grab that. Scott says it's 50-50 votes. We're at 57% yes right now, so I think that's probably enough time to... Um, that's probably enough time for the poll, so... Uh, we will go ahead and end the poll. So we'll go ahead and play with the status bar on. That that was you guys. So if anybody out there in chat land uh, complains, you guys... You, you guys can blame the chat. And actually, speaking of which, give me a quick second here. Okay. All right. Let's go back to it. All right. So it doesn't really matter what difficulty I pick here, because my goal is to play on Nightmare. Uh, Quake actually isn't that difficult compared to, you know, even parts of Doom. And Nightmare on this game, I think it's probably equivalent to, like, Ultra Violence on Doom. Um, now granted, I'm a little biased because I've been playing this game a long time. And so I have most enemy locations memorized and all that stuff, even if I don't play this game in many months, like, I can usually come back to it and still do okay. Although this time, I'm actually playing it with a different mouse. Uh, my last mouse, uh, which is a Logitech G203, that's kind of my preferred mouse. It's very simple, bare bones, uh, still has a decent DPI, uh, and it has a look and feel of, like, a classic Logitech mouse that I used to use, you know, starting in the uh, mid to late 90s and thus uh, played Quake with back in the day. Uh, but now I'm using a cheap Razer Death Adder. It's called Death Adder Essential. Probably a 30 or $40 mouse, nothing, nothing too special, but it is bigger, and my hands aren't quite used to it. So that might affect my performance a little bit. We can shoot that tile right there to get ourselves a shotgun. Uh, well, cool. You know what I was, what I will say, is Quake is an easier game than Doom when you know how what you're doing and you know how to take advantage of all of its new systems like vertical aiming, um, you know, uh, rockets, splash damage, and stuff like that. Uh, knowing where the quad damage is, you know. But when you when I first played this back in the day, I actually had a lot of trouble because like. I didn't even know you could really, like, free look constantly. Like, yeah, I would stop and, like, use, like, the page up and down keys or something like that, which I think the the default look up and down keys. Um, and at very key moments. But I wasn't just, like, strafing left and right and aiming vertically at the same time. I didn't learn that until multiplayer. And people kind of coached me into learning how to play that way. And remember when Quake came out, there was still a lot of people playing Doom with, like, a keyboard. Even though Doom was designed with mouse, uh, <laughs> with mouse in mind, but a lot of people still just play with keyboards. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of... This was like a transitional period for FPS and, uh, honestly, PC gaming as a whole. Uh, and a lot of people don't, uh, remember that. Uh, if they were around back then, but they also might be too young to even know that was like a thing like they might just assume that oh everybody You know started with this looking vertically, you know free looking 
That's always been standard, but nope, was not always standard. There was, you know, was, this was an evolutionary period. And, uh, so Quake in the very beginning was actually pretty tough for me. It took me, I think, a, a, probably six months before I actually beat the game. And I think that was beating it on Nightmare as well. Um, but it still took me, uh, quite a while. And then after I finally beat the game, that's when I started learning how to get into the multiplayer. Someone had told me, dude, you gotta try the multiplayer, and I did, and then it was just like, end of story. I just, I was hooked on it for years and years. And that's when, uh, I started learning how to play FPS like we do nowadays. Um... But I didn't just wake up and start, like, jumping around and, and mouse aiming like this. Switching weapons on the fly, that was another thing that I picked up on through uh, multiplayer gaming. And one thing I love about Quake is the fact that you switch weapons instantly in this game. There is no delay. Um, so, you've got a ton of flexibility in this game because of that simple mechanic of just instant weapon switching. Okay, so we're gonna come this way. That little flying thing is called a scrag. And those are ogres, the guys that shoot grenades at me. Go ahead and use my nail gun. If you're using the nail gun, it's on uh, weapon slot number four, so you just press the number four key. Uh, you can also bind weapons to specific keys. And in the original version of Quake, you have to actually do that manually through the console command. In the console, you hit the tilde key, and it brings up this. And you can type stuff in, like bind. Bind key command, attach a command to a key. And it's not just weapons that you can bind to specific keys. Uh, one thing I would do back in the day was bind very specific, like, music CD tracks. Quake shipped on a CD. Its music was CD audio back in the day, so you'd have to have the disc and the drive if you wanted any music. Thankfully, Quake did not have copy protection, so you could install it and still play it without the CD in the drive. So what I would do is I would put other CDs in the drive, and then I would have uh, multiple bind keys for, like, all the tracks on a CD. And, uh... You know, say I was listening to like a Metallica album and I knew all the like where all the tracks were, I'd I'd hit like the key for like track five on, on load or something like that. And um uh, you know, or like track two on Ride the Lightning, you know, so it was uh Yeah, I, I actually kinda miss that that theory where you just pop a disc in the drive and you'd have to manually do stuff. <laughs> Uh, this, you know, technology has gotten so much better, though. It's, it's probably better that we've moved past that, but I do have a lot of nostalgia for it, for sure. Alright, there's gonna be a fiend that shows up right behind me, and then two more. Woo! Just like that. And these teleporters actually teleport you to the opposite side up here. So this one will teleport me to that end, just like that. And so... If you're trying to play really fast, you kind of need to keep that in mind, otherwise you'll just fall off the platform, just like I did there. I'm using the super shotgun here. Generally, you want to use it when you're up close. You don't really want to use it when you're far away. And that's what the regular shotgun's for. A lot of people don't like the, re the regular shotgun, but it's more like a sniper rifle, in a way. It's actually pretty useful at long range. And it still does decent damage, too. Blue Dragon says, Am I the only one who prefers Quake 1 to Quake 2? No, not at all. There's actually a lot of Quake 1 fans that actually prefer it to the second game. Um, and a big reason is, like, the gothic industrial style in Quake 1. Also, the gameplay in Quake 1 is, it's, it's faster. Uh, your movement's faster. Weapon switching's a lot quicker. It's instantaneous, like I said. Um, and it actually has a smaller arsenal that I think is a little bit tighter um, overall. Quake 2 has some guns that are kind of like, eh, not going to use them in multiplayer, you know. But, um, but Quake 2, I think Quake 2 is still a great game. It's just not a great Quake game. Well, did he, honestly, I can't say that now because, like, honestly, I think it is a great Quake game. But when it came out, it was not, it was clearly not Quake. It was like... A uh, totally different theme, you know, like space marines and and, and whatnot. Um, 
fighting like an alien race. You weren't fighting like these interdimensional beings and whatnot. But, you know, I warmed with the Quake 2, and it's got a kick-ass soundtrack. It's got one of my favorite soundtracks, or I should say one of my favorite rock soundtracks of all time. It's just, uh, you know, for, for my taste in music, it's an awesome soundtrack. Alright, so what we're gonna do is kill some of these zombies down here. Usually I kind of drop down early. Here, I'll show you. You can come up here. This is actually in, in the attract mode. You come here, it demonstrates, you know, crushing platforms. So you shoot that. And then zombies will appear behind us here. Just like that. And since we're playing on Nightmare, uh, we're gonna have to fight two shamblers here. Now, by default in Quake, you do have auto-aim. Uh, so I have that disabled in this source port. So now there's actually the Shambler over here. I can actually trigger him just by shooting like that. And I'm going to go ahead and just use my shotgun because there are a lot of shotgun shells in this game. So, you know, if you want to conserve ammo to make later parts easier, just use your shotguns. And since we're playing on Nightmare, the Shamblers are actually easier than they are on lower difficulties. And the reason for that is that on Nightmare, the second they get in range of being able to zap you, they will zap you. And so you can just hide behind a wall. It's almost like the Arch Vial in Doom. Except the Arch Vial was more random, even on the highest difficulties. The Shambler in the highest difficulty kind of has the opposite effect. He will always try to zap you, and then you can basically just control his pattern. That's actually one, one way Quake is easier than Doom. All right, we gotta fall down here, grab the key, and all these zombies pop up. You know, one evolution from Doom was, like, all these scripted sequences in Quake. You know, there were sort of scripted sequences in Doom where, like, you'd pick up an item, and, like, a bunch of, you know, enemies would appear around you. Um, but these were, like, zombies. They appear laying down, I guess, and then they, they all get up. You know, so it's kind of a cool effect. You know, if you saw it in 1996, you'd be like, whoa, that's actually pretty cool. The technology in Quake for the time was really something special. And then that ended up leading to lots of other great stuff. You know, from id Software and other companies, you know? It, it was a, it was a industry defining title, I think. Not just genre defining, but like the technology was, you know, kind of off the charts for the time. John Carmack is the man. <laughs> you do have bunny hopping in this, kind of like you do in later Quakes. If you jump at uh, a specific way, you'll actually start gaining momentum. Another scripted sequence here. I think there's a zombie here. Yep. If you don't kill a zombie uh, instantly, like if you don't jib them, as it's called, where they basically explode into a million pieces, uh, they will get back up. And I knew that splash damage was far enough away that it wasn't going to kill the zombie. See, there he is. There's going to be another ogre up here. You can kind of take advantage of, like, the really, I don't know, uh, unusual hitboxes. And just kind of like snipe enemies like from corners. Very handy in this game. Alright, so we're gonna come up here. And one of the other things about Quake 2 in particular is the fact that it's such a long damn game. Um like I said, I've, I've warmed up the Quake 2 over the years, and you know, I've warmed, I warmed up a long time ago. I've, you know, I've enjoyed Quake 2 for a very long time, but um, one of the reasons I actually didn't like it as much back in the day is because my PC could barely run it, and it wasn't until I was able to get a PC of my own uh, a couple years later that uh, 
you know, I was able to enjoy the game with, like, you know, GL rendering and, you know, 60 FPS and whatever. Now, when I run through this, I kind of have to do a, a spin, otherwise I, I, I just have too much momentum and I fall down like that. So this thing right here is not going to quake, uh, I was gonna say quake you, not going to crush you. And we're gonna have ourselves a couple of fiends. Now, I don't actually have to kill these guys. I can just run through that door if I want. But once I kill these guys, uh, a Shambler will appear. There he is. If you try to get up close to the Shamblers, they will try to melee you, but they're going to be zapping you before you even get up there, so. All right. There we go. And... No, I'll just go ahead and leave it at that. Now, I think this does autosave. Uh, or not. Actually, I should probably be saving my game. I'm used to the, uh, the modern source port. We'll go ahead and save there. And when we cross this threshold here, a Scrag is going to appear behind us. Oh, already did. And there's an Ogre up top here. I'm just going to go ahead and shoot these. And uh, let them sort of duke it out with each other. if ogres can kill other ogres. I don't think they can. I think it has to be a different enemy. Yeah, it looks like it is. Oops. Oh, no! He actually killed him. Interesting. Very cool. I thought there was supposed to be a knight down there, but it's, it doesn't look like he's appearing. All right. All right, some scrags in the distance. Yeah, I had mentioned auto-aim earlier, and the auto-aim makes fighting long-ranged enemies, like, really easy. But because of how the hitboxes work in this, it's still pretty easy, even if you're using free look uh, and no auto-aim. And this is our super nail gun, the Perforator. Super powerful gun. It's probably my favorite gun in the game, actually. I love the super nail gun. All right, come on. You can do it. You can do it, Ranger. There we go. It's gonna be an ogre down there. Got him. And there's gonna be some knights here. Sweet. Now there is actually more to your status bar. Uh, but I don't have it set up because it literally will block my gun entirely. Now, I think there are actually ways to, like, scale the, uh, the status bar, but I'm not gonna bother with that here, so... And if it hasn't been, uh, made clear yet, you can tell you're doing damage because, uh, there's big red blood spurts. So if you're, if you're ever wondering if you're actually doing damage or not, just look for the blood. You see the blood, you are 100% doing damage. Hey, Dasan, what's going on? All right, I'm going to use my regular nail gun. I like using the regular nail gun uh, a lot of times because like it uses a whole lot less ammo, and I'm less likely to overshoot and waste ammo. You know, the power, I think, is basically the same. 
It's just that with the super nail gun, you are using a lot more ammo. So you kill stuff a lot faster, but you're also using up a whole lot more ammo. Woo! And another thing I like to do here is try to snipe guys from a distance. Although I don't really need to do this because I actually don't plan on going up there. That is the normal exit. So speaking of which, let me go ahead and just not waste my ammo. It's actually a pretty dangerous part. And another one coming up here. <laughs> All right, to access the secret level, we have to go down both these cubbies. And there's some switches. And then the secret exits back in this uh, big body of water. And if for some reason you don't have a grenade uh, grenade launcher yet, it is here. And there we go. So this level we're coming up on is called Ziggurat Vertigo. And it's uh, the only level in the game with uh, low gravity. So when you uh, lob a grenade, Look at that. It's pretty awesome, actually. Yep, goes all the way up. Oh, wow, I never thought to try that. Holy crap. I think I actually... I feel like I heard somebody up there. Maybe I didn't, and it was just my imagination. <laughs> it's what I think I love about Quake physics, man. It's so good. Uh, we do get a rocket launcher here, though, so, the, like, just using the grenade launcher is kind of redundant at this point, at least for this level. Let's go ahead and grab this ammo. Oh, I definitely triggered him over there. That's, that's crazy. I never thought to try that before. All the years I've been playing this game. All right, here's our rocket launcher. If I want, I could try to take it safe here. Usually I have fun and I just jump up and just try to annihilate all these guys. But because of the gravity, they can't actually shoot their grenades directly at me if I'm below them. All right, let's go ahead and grab this. Ogre backpacks are always uh, two rockets, so it's good to pick up all of them if you can. The rocket launcher is undoubtedly probably the most well-rounded weapon in the game because you you can you know shoot at the ground. You've got splash damage. It shoots straight. It shoots very fast. It's very very powerful. And so once you get the rocket launcher, you're going to be using that for most of the rest of the run. And if you hit Ogres on directly, it'll typically take two rockets to kill them. Now, if you're doing splash damage, it might take a little bit more, but typically it's just two. And what I'm going to do is grab this, and I'm going to switch over to my super nail gun. And I'm going to jump up this way. So there is a shambler up here. And you always want to get rid of the shambler, especially on this level. They are stupid dangerous on this level. Rocket jump! Whee! And here's another one. 
Another invulnerability right here. Should actually rocket jump again. Or not. Alright, we are basically good to go. Hmm. The rocket launcher is also especially good on this map because of the, the low gravity. All right, I'm gonna jump up here, uh, get this yellow armor. Yellow armor is the mid-tier armor, it gives you 150. Actually, I see some ogre backpacks. I'm gonna go ahead and grab those just to keep that ammo. I'm actually playing a little more safe than I normally do, but that's okay. Uh, also down here, there is a mega health. Or I guess it's just, it just says you receive 100 health. Uh, let's go, where do I wanna go? See, there's actually a switch that I missed, I missed. But what's cool about this map is you don't actually have to hit them. A couple of little tiny platforms like this. Oh, I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, I still didn't get it, okay. All right, now let's come down here. I'm gonna switch over to my nail gun, super nail gun. Blue Dragon says, God mode does rip apart your armor. Yes, when you're in uh, invincibility mode with the pentagrams, uh, any hit you take uh, will still deplete your armor. Now, you can't see how much it's being depleted by because it just says 666 where your armor is. Um, but yes, you do lose your armor when you take hits, but I don't really care. There's so much armor all over the place that uh, when you've got the maps routed, like, you should never have no armor, you know, if you know the maps pretty well. This is actually the one difference in my playlist right here. I've got uh, some Quake 3 music playing. You know what I discovered earlier tonight? Uh, when I was looking to figure out how I wanted to change up my, my Quake playlist, or Quake 2 playlist, is that I have the Quake 3 Arena noise soundtrack. It's missing like a ton of music from the actual Quake 3 game itself, including the campgrounds theme. Which sucks because it's my favorite theme. So, yeah. I had made a uh, personal rip of it myself, like, over 25 years ago. <laughs> so, we're, I'm using that MP3 I made ages ago. Alright, so I'm gonna try to kill this fiend. Just in case I happen to get knocked down there. The fiends are arguably the most dangerous enemies in the game. Because they do so much damage to you. If they lunge at you and get a direct hit, like, they can kill you instantly. Like, it's it's pretty nasty. It's pretty mean. Uh, I'm very familiar with the blue slimy friends, Blue Dragon, but they don't kill you instantly. You can at least take a few hits by them if you're uh, armored out and whatnot. But fiends are, are the things that will... They will... You get cornered in particular. They are... <laughs> absolutely awful. And trust me, I don't forget anything in Quake. <laughs> All right, so this is going to take us to our one of our key rooms with the Shambler.
Actually, let me go ahead and leave here so I can take advantage of my quad damage. So we got quad damage right now. We do crazy damage. So when you get it, you want to take advantage of it. And we just took advantage of it. Uh, most of the enemies in this level are dead now. Whoa, where did you come from? Alright, I think I've got both keys. So, let me actually come up here. Ah, we'll do it that way. We'll rocket jump. That's funny, I rocket jumped over the trigger, apparently. Yeah, what you're supposed to do is actually jump up here, jump across, and then you can run and jump like this. But, Quake has rocket jumping. That was something I learned through playing multiplayer back in the day. And the rocket jumping is very good in this game. Uh, armor actually really helps to absorb the impact of your rockets. Especially yellow and red armor. You know, in multiplayer in particular, it's you always want to try to hoard the, the red armor if you can, if it's on a map that you're playing. Alright, so this is our second to last level on this episode. There's four episodes total. Whoa! I thought he was dead. And a trick I always like to show off here is that you'll notice that there are these grates here. You can actually see the enemies down below. So you want to take them out from above. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult to actually avoid their projectiles. There we go. Now, if I wanted to, I could try to rocket jump up there. There's a lot of shortcuts you can take in this game, thanks to rocket jumping. Uh-oh, that's not good. Oh, that's actually really bad. I thought I had more nails. Do I have the extended version of the Episode 2 level? I do not have that on, on here. I'm using the original, original Quake uh, source files for this. Alright, we're gonna have some zombies from, uh, raining from up above. <laughs> Go ahead and hit this, lowers his staircase. And this will take us to a secret. Another 100 health. And there's gonna be another fiend over here. Flip the switch. Ogre appears over here. And then this will take us back to the beginning. Now, if I go back to this room... ...and I fall down... ...Crusher... ...will leave a uh, teleporter behind it, which takes us to this super nail gun. So if for some reason you... Don't have a super nail gun, you can get it here, but it's there's also a secret here with another hundred health. You notice that my health is actually ticking down uh, somewhat quickly. Sometimes it'll be uh, two numbers at once. All right, so I need the gold rune key, it's right there, but I also want some quad damage for this because a shambler will appear behind me, and it's best to use that super nail gun. And if I'm fast enough, I can kill the enemies at the end room, including another Shambler. And he's dead. <laughs> I love this game. Alright, final level for episode one. Let's go ahead and save it. Just in case something happens, like uh, the game crashes.
But this is Kthon? Something like that? The names are really weird. It's it's like uh Lovecraftian names. Sandy Peterson, who worked on this game, was a huge Lovecraft guy. He's actually designed a lot of tabletop games, board games. Um based around Lovecraftian stuff. That's another thing about Quake 1, is that it is very Lovecraftian in terms of its, like, enemy themes and stuff like that. Like, even the Shambler is, like, a, uh, being, I think, within, like, Lovecraft literature. There we go. I've been following Sandy Peterson's YouTube channel for quite a while now, and he posts lots of videos about that stuff, and... I was like, oh man, so that's where the Shambler originated from. It's very cool. Unfortunately, over the last year, he's just been doing YouTube shorts. Which is fine, but, like, I, I liked his old, like, 10 to 15 minute long content. Very insightful. Uh, all right, one down, three to go. I'll go ahead and let this just play out. Seek the totality of the four runes. Don't mind if I do. Alright, we're gonna go to episode two. The second episode, the episode of Realm of Black Magic. Ancient castles and strange beasts ahead. So every episode starts off with a military base. And then I guess the idea is you go through a teleporter which takes you to those alternate dimensions. And I guess these military bases have been overrun by interdimensional beings. I actually did not mean to go in here. Whoops. Okay, cool. It opened back up. Awesome. Uh, let's come here, get some armor. some ammo. And there's a secret hundred health up here. And John says, what is it with those interdimensional beings? Can't they stay in their own dimension? Well, if they did that, John, we wouldn't have, uh, we wouldn't have a game. But yeah, I hear you. All right, come on, man. It's super easy to get stuck on these. It's, it's kind of janky, but I think that was the point. <laughs> All right, you can fall down. Alright, and if I come down here, there might be red armor. Let's see. Aha, there is. In multiplayer, if you're playing this as a multiplayer map, this is actually a teleporter. It doesn't look like one, but it'll actually teleport you up. Let's go this way, get this blue key. We're gonna have to have it anyway. And if I come down here, I can shoot this. I'm also going to grab this. And if I shoot this uh, grate right here, we'll get ourselves a pentagram, which is invulnerability in this game.
All right, we have to wait for this to open. Looks like I uh, barely took any hits there because I still have 188 of my red armor. Nope, took another one. Do I ever do the expansions? Uh, once in a blue moon, I do them. And actually, uh, last year I did uh, Expansion Pack 2, Dissolution of Eternity, for the first time. I had never actually finished that one, and so I ran through it a couple times last year, then did a YouTube stream of it. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Uh, that might have been actually during October when I did that. Pretty cool expansion. I, I liked it more than I did back in the day when I tried playing it. I do really like the first expansion. Um, Scourge of Armagon. Pretty cool level design in that one. Uh, I've also, not on YouTube, but back in the day I did Shrack. I had picked that up and played through that quite, quite a lot, actually. I did enjoy that. It's kind of janky and goofy, but it was still fun. I've got some other, ex like, old-school expansions, like, official, or even non-official expansions that, you know, I want to try to do eventually. I've got this one called Aftershock for Quake. I've got, um, uh, I've got Malice. I, I want to try those eventually. <laughs> I've got, unfortunately, I've got the X-Men mod, which is just kind of awful. But I still want to try to go through it eventually. And then there's a lot of, like, high-rated, you know, uh, more modern mods that I wouldn't mind trying eventually, but not high on my priority list at the moment. But yes, I did do a lot of the, uh, the you know, the first expansion in particular, Scourge of Armagon, and then uh, I played a little bit of Dis Dissolution back in the day, but not enough. And then I played Shrek back in the day. I don't really have a favorite level, man. Uh, I'm not usually that kind of guy that's like, Oh, this is my favorite level. Like, no, that, that's not me. Sorry. <laughs> Can't answer that question with a definitive answer. I like the whole game. I like every level, actually. You know, there's not really any one specific level I get to in Quake, and I'm just like, oh, God, this level. Like, there are levels like that, I think, in, in, like, Doom or Doom 2, but there aren't really any levels like that for me in Quake 1. I think what helps for me, though, is I played every single map in multiplayer back in the day. Hours and hours and hours and hours. And so, you know, I'm intimately familiar with every single map, so even if, like, I didn't like the maps when I first played them, like, I like them now. Hey, Joe. Welcome back. Good to see you. All right. Now, if I jump in the water, there's a way to get a grenade launcher, but I'm not going to bother with it. I already have a grenade launcher. But there are secrets if you traverse the whole map uh, in that water, which is kind of nice. Oh, missed him. There's also a fiend down uh, in this water. So kind of a dangerous section if you're not careful. Whew. There he is. Oh, he's still alive. <laughs> ah, we can just skip him. 
He's not coming back up. Not unless I let him. You see the regular shotgun is actually still pretty decent. It does fairly decent damage at a decent clip. I do kind of want to get rid of this guy because I am going to probably drop back down there again. Because nails uh, will open up there. Assuming I remember it, I probably won't. Zombies in here. Behind me. Any day now, zombies. Maybe I have to hit this switch first. Oh, no, there they are. Alright, so this was a part back in the day where I would just, like, sit and aim vertically. I would take out these ogres from a distance. Definitely makes this part a little bit easier if you do that. And there's a knight up there. Hey, Cedar Valley. How are you doing, sir? All right. That opens up this door. And so I can actually trigger some of these guys right away. All right, that's good enough for me. Now what I probably wanna do is actually jump into the water because there is uh, red armor down below. And yeah, so this is opened up. Go ahead, definitely want to grab that. Cedar Valley's doing good. Hell yeah, man. That's good to hear. Whoa, where did you come from? He must have come through this door. And I, I must have triggered him because he's dead already. Woo! I have not played enemy territory Quake Wars. No, I never had the desire to. That was one of those Quake games that, again, didn't really seem like a traditional Quake game to me. I, I had no interest in it, and honestly, I kind of still don't. But then again, you know, when it comes to Quake, the original three Quake games are kind of the ones I care about the most. Uh, everything else, I, I could take it or leave it, including Quake 4. Um, I actually still haven't done Quake 4 in this channel because, like... The last time I went back and tried to, like, relearn the game, even on PC, I was just like, God, this is so boring. Even on the highest difficulty. I was like, I can't do this. I, I've gotten weak in my old age when it comes to trying to cover stuff on YouTube. I just don't have the patience for mediocre games anymore. Not the way I used to. Well, that's not entirely true. I mean, it kind of depends on the types of games they are. And if it's like a 30 minute mo like mediocre game, okay, that's one thing. But if it's like a 10 hour mediocre game, no, no thanks, man. I've got better things to do with my life. And that's, that's not the comment on like the quality of Quake Wars. I just, I never played it. And like I said, I had no interest in it, but 
I was specifically speaking about Quake 4 right there. I don't hate the game, but... I don't even know if I like it all that much. I certainly don't love it, that's for sure. So, uh, this level actually takes us to our next secret map. And actually, the next secret map might even be one of the more difficult maps in the game, depending on how you look at things. One cool little trick here is you can just keep these nails activated. When you get towards the edge of the bridge, they stop firing. But they'll hit the guys in the hallway. Hey, 8-Bit SNK boy, long time no see. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, Cool says it's such a railed cinematic FPS with super slow movement. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, scripted sequences in Quake 4. Now, there's still this traditional run-and-gun gameplay, but it, honestly, the game doesn't even get decent in my eyes until, like, halfway through. Like... You get turned into a Strog, and when that happens, your movement speed, like, doubles. And honestly, to me, it's like the game doesn't even really get all that playable until you get to that point. Like, it's very unquake-like in its speed um, at that point. Alright, so Super Nail Gun time, because we got Shambler time! And this is actually how we access our secret level. We have to hit this uh, tile right up there. Jump up here. Flick that switch. Run out. And, uh... Yeah, we come through here. Jump back over here. Edge our way around. Slowly, preferably. This will actually take me to my secret exit. But first, not without a dope fish sighting. Uh, and I'm actually not going to exit just yet. Because, like I said, I was going to go underwater. Splash! Got some fish. And the reason for this is that there's uh, there's some red armor. So, you know, I might as well grab that, right? Right here. You've never seen the dope fish in Quake? Well, now you have. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great little secret. <laughs> Freddy says, I love just about everything in Painkiller's Looney Park level. The atmosphere, the enemies, the battle song, uh, and you ride a roller coaster while blasting away enemies in the end. Yeah, I love that level, Freddy. And the level gets more interesting, too, when you try to, like, get the card. You, when you try to meet that level's uh, requirements. Oh, nice, SNK boy. You picked up a 32X because of Doom Resurrection. Hell yeah. Very nice. All right, this is our secret map for episode two. And what I'm going to do is come this way first and try to get rid of all these guys initially. Otherwise, the last section will be a little bit of a pain. Should actually keep using my shotguns because there's some tricky parts later on in this uh, this level. I'd rather have some some powerful guns. 
Also, if you see enemies starting to fight each other, let them duke it out. It'll save you so much ammo. Maybe not necessarily time, but it'll definitely save you some ammo. Alright, we can also shoot down here, which will help us out later. Alright, good deal. Alright, into the water. Oh, shoddy shells. Have I ever tried doing axe only? Uh, yes, and uh, very quickly I said, F that. I said, what am I doing with myself? This is stupid. Go get him, Ogre. Oh, help. <laughs> I, uh, I actually did deliberately do a shotgun only run like single barrel shotgun not double and I was able to do every map except two also there's a secret later on in the map you have to shoot all these tiles uh, in this map to to unlock it I'll hopefully I get it and I'll be able to show it to you but yeah just the shotgun only challenge itself was pretty tough actually and axe only challenge no way no thanks I'm good so loud. Yeah, I probably should have used uh, the quad damage. There's a quad damage in the previous room, and I probably should use it here, but I, I chose not to. Which means I'm going to have to take this part a little bit safer. Oh. That's one of the things about Quake. It's like, you know, if you try to run and gun and just do lots of crazy dodging and stuff like that, you're more likely to take damage. But you can play it like classic Doom or Wolf, Wolf 3D where you just kind of like hide behind corners. There's going to be some uh, fiends right here. What about no pentagram quad rocket launcher run? I mean, I don't see how that would be all that difficult. Like, this is the part I would normally use quad damage on, and I'm handling it just fine. You know, if I can use nails and, and lightning, like, I, it's not going to be that much different, honestly. And honestly, it'll be less fun, so I don't see the point. Which is why I went all the way with just shotgun only. I wanted to see, like, how vastly different a run would have been. But limiting myself arbitrarily for like like oh just don't use the rocket launcher. I don't I don't find that very appealing. It doesn't really boost the challenge that much. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean it affects the challenge a little bit. It makes things a little bit easier, but I mean, you can really just shotgun your way through most of the game. There's there's enough ammo, and then if you've got nails and and the lightning bolt on top of that, it's you just have to adjust your strategy a little bit. So it's not really that interesting to me. All right, so what I want to do is try to take advantage of this quad damage, which I haven't really done very well, which I think is why I typically use it in a different spot. And that's it. Oh, okay. So I actually kind of messed up here because of this. 
Yeah, I totally messed up. I wanted to actually come down here with that radioactive suit to get that red armor, but I didn't want to waste the quad damage either. Yeah, exactly cool. Quad damage is so fun. And that's the whole point, is I play Quake to have fun. It's cool challenging yourself, but life is short. I tried my, my shotgun only run. Will I ever do it again? Well, I won't say never, but probably not anytime soon. All right, switch back to this. Alright, so if you hit all the tiles, this room opens up. Kind of cool. Alright, we flip these switches, and then we're basically done with this map. Give me a quick second here, guys. All right. Making progress. Episode 2 definitely feels like one of the longer episodes in the game. The maps tend to be a little more drawn out, a little more expansive, a little more confusing if you don't know what you're doing. I mean, really, I don't find most maps in Quake all that confusing, but then again, like I said, I am biased. I've been playing the game a long time, so... I'm gonna go down here and... I was gonna say, grab the, uh some quad damage down below. Joe asks, do you think that there will ever be a Rage 3? Uh, probably not. I'd say probably not. I never messed around with Rage 2, so I can't really speak to its quality. Although I did actually technically pick it up uh, a few weeks back. I picked it up on Xbox just because it was super cheap. Alright, so we've got ourselves the rocket launcher now, which just helps for this part over here because there's a lot of zombies. And the grenade launcher is fine, but, and you know, actually the grenade, grenade launcher is a great weapon, but for certain parts, the rocket launcher is just so much faster. More efficient. There's probably a zombie in the water I missed, but who cares? Whoa! Holy crap! <laughs> I was not expecting that. They... they got me good. They got me good. <laughs> wow. Who asks, has anyone here tried Wizardum? Wizardum. Uh, I've never even heard of it. What is it? Right. 
okay. Nail gun. For these guys. Don't know if I have the key yet. I do not. Oh, that's funny. Hmm, interesting. All right. Man, I'm getting tired already. Holy crap, we're not even halfway through. I have actually had a supreme lack of energy lately. For a variety of reasons. You know, another reason why I haven't done a lot of YouTube streams lately. It's like, I feel like if I don't have the energy, there's no point in me actually doing this. I do want to drop down here, though, because there's some quad damage, and I want to jump right back up. And there's a shambler over here, behind that gate. I'm going to open up the gate. There's a key. What I'm going to do is come back down here. So there's uh, some red armor. Hey, MD Mister, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. All right, when we walk over this line right here, we hear this this tile come down. And if we shoot it, it actually uh, raises a bridge. And there's a zombie, random zombie. Um Normally I would use the quad damage right now. But what I think I'm going to do is save it. I don't know if this strategy is going to pay off. But we're going to try it. And there is a Shambler up top. And an Ogre. What I'm going to do is try to get rid of them from down below. Let's uh, go up here, flick some switches. Not Nintendo switches. There's actually an ogre up there. Or over on the other side of that wall. You can actually kill him through that gap. Alright, so the idea here is to try to... kill everything on the other side with quad damage. And I don't know if this is actually going to work. Because I don't know if the quad damage is going to last that long, but I don't know. Let's see. I feel like it might, might last just enough. Don't rocket jump with quad damage. It's not a good idea. This is probably one of the, the most dangerous rooms in the game. You've got, you know, one, two, three fiends, multiple ogres lobbing grenades at you in a very tiny area. Now, uh, an old speedrun strategy is to uh, shoot all the switches and then rocket jump over. Sorry, rocket jump and then shoot the switches uh, in safety, but I don't do that. MD Mister says, I, I miss this content, but getting enough rest is the best course of action. Is this BGM the Reznor stuff? It is not. It is the uh, Quake 2 soundtrack. <laughs> I 
and now we've got uh, one track from Quake 3. <laughs> Actually, I'm glad this music's on this map, too. <laughs> Oh, actually, I want to go back down because I want those nails. So one other cool thing in Quake was that if you jump off the top of a hill, you'll actually uh, gain more height. Cool little feature that not a lot of people took advantage of back in the day. It was actually quite useful for multiplayer. Uh, especially a couple places on Episode 4. Blue Dragon, you should play Quake right now. If you can. If you can't, then... Sorry. <laughs> it is cool. This is from Quake 3, yes. And hearing it makes me want to play some Quake 3. I want to make sure all these guys up here are dead. Oh, look at this! I love it when that happens. <laughs> Just hanging off the ledge. All right, Shambler right here. Indeed, Mister says uh, Quake Three versus Unreal tournaments. Uh, I mean they're they're kind of different. They're both very unique. Uh, I much prefer Quake Three for the uh, the standard deathmatch. Well, the standard deathmatch is what I've always just kind of preferred to play uh, in any arena shooter, including Unreal Tournament. But Quake 3 is much tighter and better balanced. But I, I, I love both. And when it came to actually continuing to play either series, I continued playing Unreal Tournament. I, I kind of stopped with Quake. Um, I mean, I went from Quake to Quake 2 to Quake 3. Or technically, I went from Quake 1 straight to Quake 3. Okay, this is not good at all. Yeah, because my, my PC at the time couldn't really run Quake 2 very well, I just kept playing Quake 1 for about four years. And then when I had a PC that could run Quake 3, 
Uh, that was the newest thing that was out, and, um, you know, I loved it. I thought it was great. But after that, yeah, I played a little bit of Quake 4 single player, but it, like I said, I've already told you, I didn't really care for it that much, and so I never really messed around with its multiplayer. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think, am I missing some armor somewhere? Alright, this part's gonna be kind of tough, because... Uh, you're forced down this, uh, this elevator into water, and you're basically forced to, to drown a little bit, which, you know, depletes your health. But, man, just overall, I mean, I love Unreal Tournament. It's so good. Starting from UT99, then I went to UT, UK 2K3, and then I went to 2K4. And then I bought uh, Unreal Tournament 3 around the time it came out. And I actually played a lot of Unreal Tournament 3. A lot of people didn't like that, but I, I really enjoyed it. I'd still love to actually stream that, but nobody plays it, so... Yeah, I can't really find any, like, online servers, you know? Alright, this is gonna be a pain. Another very dangerous part. Alright, let's go back up this way. Oh, it's not gonna let me. I wonder if I can bunny hop over. <laughs> Probably not. Let's see. Might have to rocket jump. Alright, I'll just rocket jump. Just don't want to do it with quad damage. The reason is that there is a secret right here. With some sweet, sweet armor. You know, I probably don't need that health. There's, I mean, there's probably health laying around this map somewhere, but I'm not going to... Oh, never mind. There's some right there. All right, sweet. All right, good to go. Uh, Scott says Epic was working on a new Unreal Tournament game for a while, but it was, you know, has been abandoned because of Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, that was Unreal Tournament 2014. They actually used to have it as a free-to-play game on uh, the Epic Game Store. And I got really pissed earlier this year, or maybe it was late last year, because they delisted it and then took it away from people's libraries. <laughs> or they took away, like, I think it still shows in my library, but they took away the ability to download it. And if it was already on your hard drive, they took away the ability to actually play it. And I was furious, because that was one of those games I like to go back to maybe once a year. I'd go and I'd play it. It still had a fairly, like, you know, healthy-ish, uh, community. I'm just gonna say screw it to this level. We're gonna go ahead and end this episode early. Yeah, and that's true too, MD Mister. I totally forgot. Yeah, Epic delisted all the Unreal games from all, I think, online storefronts. Like, you can't buy them digitally anymore. Well, Unreal Tournament 2014, Blue Dragon, that was free. That No one paid for that, so... <laughs> can't class action that. I mean, the judge would throw that out right away. Yeah, it was Epic's choice to stop funding uh, Unreal Tournament 2014, and I, you know, I don't blame them for stopping it. Like, I, I followed their the Unreal Tournament YouTube channel for a while, quite a while actually. You know, I might actually still be subscribed to it, but forgot I was because like, or am because they haven't updated it in a very, very long time. <laughs> their their videos are only getting like 2,000 views. It was really bad. Like, nobody cared about uh, the game. 
or whatever updates it was having, there was just no interest. The arena shooter, for all intents and purposes, is dead in the traditional sense. Like, no one cares about it. Um, you know, the, the arena shooter is... Uh, it's very good as a quick pick-up-and-play kind of game, but it's very bad in terms of... Um, mastery is difficult. And what you have with this subgenre of FPS is people still around from back in the day, and they've been playing for 30 years now, close to it, and they just annihilate anybody that tries to get into it. And um, so it's, you know, people flock to the, the you know the newer, more popular stuff. Um, It's just, it is what it is. It, it kind of sucks, like, I, you know, I stopped playing online FPS when the arena shooter died, because I had no interest in, like, Counter-Strike, and I absolutely had no interest in, like, Call of Duty. Um, even though technically, I mean, a lot of Call of Duty modes, it's, like, standard deathmatch with some, some perks and stuff like that. But you die so fast in those games, they just never really appeal to me, and the whole military aesthetic doesn't do anything for me. I, like... The futuristic stuff of Unreal Tournament, or like the gothic industrial stuff of like Quake 1 and Quake 3. You know, stuff, otherworldly stuff. But like, uh... And then team-based stuff, like Battlefield, never did anything for me either. I wasn't really much of a team-based player, so... I like being able to jump in by myself and try to learn the maps and try to control the maps and stuff like that, and, uh... Yeah, the classic multiplayer FPSs of my day are just... You know, they're not... <laughs> they're not in style anymore, so... And don't get me wrong, I actually... I watch some of my friends play stuff like Overwatch and whatever, and it does look fun to me. Like, you know, if I had, like... You know, more casual gamer friends... Uh, that I kept in touch with online, or if I had, like, a family with kids or something, I would... I would definitely play it. And stuff like it, but, uh... I don't really have any of that, uh, and so I just kind of, uh, still do my own thing here with the old school stuff that I'm used to. You can kind of jump over these, too. Well, not jump over them, but, like, jump above them and get some free hits in. It's fairly safe. Right, these guys are probably walking back around. Unless I killed them. Yep, I killed them. Red armor right here. Hey, Crestline, welcome back. Yeah, I should I should mention that. I, I've seen a couple friends play uh, Fortnite as well, and it actually does look really fun. You know, I, I see why it's gotten really popular, but... Um, you know, the classic deathmatch shooter as we know it is, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think it'll ever bounce back. And if it does, color me surprised. <laughs> I'm still alive by that point. Let me flip that. I'm gonna go ahead and use this quad damage here. Let's go ahead and come up here. Jump on these boxes. There's a secret right here. <laughs> Crestline says, I hear Quake 2 music. It sounds lovely. Scott says, Team Fortress 2 is still going semi-strong. Yeah, I figured it probably was. And I'm going to jump down here. For some more secrets. Yeah, I don't know about that, Blue Dragon. I mean, that's guess that's your opinion, but, I mean, plenty of people still enjoying that game, so... <laughs> plenty of other people would probably say otherwise. But then again, I could be the jaded old man and say, Counter-Strike ruined first-person shooting. Things, things used to be so good where it's just quick. Back in my day... 
All right, grab that yellow armor. I try not to be too harsh on these things. I mean, granted, I have no experience with actual Fortnite in terms of actually playing it, so... What do I know? But what I do know is there's still lots of people out there that are enjoying it. <laughs> oh. Along with other games. Back in my day. All right, next level. I do like episode three a lot. A bunch of its levels are actually kind of like tight. A little more claustrophobic in a way. Not all of them, but some of them. All right, so I actually want to—I want to go back to that elevator and fall down, but I'm kind of not paying attention right now. Let's go ahead and do that. Fall down. All right, sweet. And you can actually shoot down here, kill a couple enemies early if you want. That scared me. <laughs> that fiend sounded like he was right next to me. Nice. <laughs> Vince says, boo to anything pre- t Oh, he says, boo to anything post-2003. <laughs> See, that right there is a major fallacy, Vince, because you're- you're- you're leaving out Painkiller. What is wrong with you? The first Painkiller in his expansion pack, anyway. I can- I couldn't care less about the others. Alright, so, quad damage. Let's go ahead and use our nail gun. Uh-oh, that's not good. So we've got the, uh, Ring of Shadows. Which makes you almost completely invisible. Uh, in multiplayer, it's actually a really funny effect. Uh, you're completely invisible except for your eyeballs. Everyone can still see your eyeballs. And so you have to, uh, when you're playing multiplayer, you have to watch for eyeballs floating around. It's pretty funny. When you see them, like, zip past you, you're like, what the hell? I've always loved that. It's so fun. All right, we're gonna have uh, some shamblers. I'd really like to try to get rid of this one down here first. There he is.
Yeah, if you get rid of these shamblers first, this part is a hell of a lot easier. Hey, big dogs. No, I have not seen gameplay for Helldivers 2. Uh, it's a game I've never really looked into, actually, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of these zombies. Look at that glitching. Damn, source port. MD Mr. says, so the AC leaked water directly on my gaming laptop today, and it died with an awful burnt electronic smell. Ugh, sorry to hear that, MD Mr. That's not cool. Man, that's a bummer. Alrighty. Gotta get my uh, mouse cord situated. It's like not good. Oh, no, no. That was actually faster than I expected. So I've been doing this whole playthrough so far with the headphone cup on my left ear. But it's been on my left ear for, well, ever since we started streaming. It's starting to hurt my left ear. So I switched it to my right ear, and now I feel like I have to relearn the, the whole game <laughs> over again. It's weird how your body gets tripped up just by simple, like, audio changes. Oops. Hey, this is where a situation where you can just focus on your regular shotgun. Take out those, uh... Whoops! Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> I was gonna say, just, uh... Focus on those scrags from a distance. Don't waste nails, just use your regular shotgun. Come back here, use your shotgun. Fiend. Ooh. Hit the wrong key. I was trying to hit the six key to switch my grenade launcher, but I ended up hitting like the right arrow for some reason. <laughs> Almost fell to my death. Alright, switch to our nail gun. Just in case something happens here.
All right, this is our last stretch. another pretty dangerous section. Alright, I think we're good to go. that level all right let's uh get rid of some ogres i see one up there just to keep them from firing out below Always love how they made the ogres like do like crazy jumps. You don't really see that on uh, the first episode, so once it starts happening in later episodes, it's like, whoa, what the hell? Do I ever go for 100%? Not really. It's not very hard to 100% quake maps. It's just, you know, once you know where everything is, you just do it. The secrets aren't really all that, like, crazy to find or discover. And sometimes I get 100%, sometimes I don't. It just depends on how I feel. It's a lot easier to 100% in Quake than it is in, like, Doom. Launcher. Alright, this next section coming up can be pretty tough as well. Honestly, the toughest parts in Quake are probably when you've got barely any room to move. And this is one of those, uh, those sections. With bouncing grenades in said room. And you can actually, uh, walk up here just like that. But I think you're also supposed to just, like, yeah, you're supposed to just shoot that. But what's really funny about Quake is that even if just, like, a pixel's worth or two pixels worth of tile is sitting out, you can actually stand on it. I love it. <laughs> So you can actually kind of like shortcut your way through certain parts just because of that. It's one thing I've always loved about this game.
Now, there's a fiend, like, right over there, but I'm not going to worry about him. Man, this was a fun thing in multiplayer. You'd hit that switch, and it crushes the player that's in this box. Of course, if you're playing by yourself, you don't really have to worry about that. <laughs> Vince says, Quake Guy's cat-like nibbleness. Ah, uh, why don't I do that? That was dumb. I've only got 25 nails. Hmm. This part is kind of a pain. Okay. Woo. Now we're okay. Thank you, infighting. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, what we're going to do is just go straight to our secret level. Ah, eh, screw it. I've already lost all my armor anyway. <laughs> nice. All right, so we can come down here, fall down here. Harder in the eyes, but yeah, secret exit. Freddy says, uh, speaking of cats, how's your furry pals been, sir, YouTube? Uh, they're doing well. Milo is actually sleeping right next to me. I still have Patchouli's beds in my game room clogged up with stuff I'm trying to sell. So she's in the other room, but yeah, they're, they're both doing well. And this is one of those maps where if you try to do it regular shotgun only, it's insanely difficult. I think I managed to finally do it, but it took many, 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 many attempts. Uh, there we go. Flip the switch. I mean, this is a pretty cool map. It is definitely short and sweet. Taking my time. It's definitely a dangerous map, that's for sure. I get some zombies over here. Whoa! It's not expecting you. Shoot that, opens up some quad damage. We definitely want that. But we need to hit this switch up here first. Switch to our nail gun. Alright, now let's take advantage of this. Not too bad. There we go. Another good level to have uh, some Quake 3 music.
All right. Science says this is his favorite level in episode three. All right. Uh, I was going to say I'd kind of like to skip that quad damage for now, but we'll go ahead and just take it. Grab this and these rockets. Hey, gun tanks, how are you doing, sir? He says, Hell yes, it's quack. <laughs> I'd like some quack too. How are you doing, gun tanks? Been a little while. Yeah, me too as well, Gun Tanks. I need to try to go through Quake 2 again. And uh, I want to try to go through the... Not necessarily the original expansions, but I want to go through the uh, the new one that was made for the re-release. I actually had started playing it a little bit on Twitch uh, late last year, and I was having a good time with it. I was like, man, this is actually really cool. It's, it's like a... It's like if someone made a slaughter wad, but for Quake 2. It's, it's pretty crazy. Get some shamblers. Go back and grab this armor. Oh, you're using the uh, Yamagi source port? Yeah, I mean, that's a great source port, too. That's actually how I played through it on YouTube uh, a long time ago. Probably like 2017, 2018. Whenever I built my first Ryzen. All right. Woo. Oh, I missed the uh, the shells. That's a bummer. Oh, well, not a big deal. First world problems.
There's a lot of scrags on this map. Another one bites the dust. Yeah, that's the other thing Gun Tanks about the Night Dive conversion of Quake 2 is that, like, they adjusted some of the enemy behavior. Yeah, so things things can actually be a, a good bit more challenging in that, in that version. Especially if you're playing on Nightmare. I'm gonna kill these guys up here, and then... Going to grab this. And just kind of skip these guys for now. <laughs> Run past them. See ya. Yeah, by the way, this is our final stage on Episode 3. And then we just have Episode 4, and then that's it. Well, not quite it. We have one more level after that, which is kind of like the final boss level, if you will. But then we'll be done. <clears throat> it looks like we've been going for about two hours now. Gun Tank says, uh, Quake 2 on PS1 was actually a- was pretty dope for a port. Yeah, I agree. I- I really liked Quake 2 on PS1. Honestly, back in the day, I actually preferred it to the PC one. Not because it was, like, better graphically or anything like that, or control-wise, but it still played really well, and, dude, it was so short compared to the PC version. I remember being able to beat the PS1 version once I got good at it in, like, three hours. And I definitely could not do that uh, with the PC version. Even though I was good at the PC version too. Like, it was just such a bloated experience. Uh, whoa, I thought I killed you. Apparently I killed something else. Yeah, the secret. Or fall. Take fall damage. Alright, Scrag. Scrags. There's two of them. Whoa! Okay. I knew he was over there. I just wasn't sure exactly where.
All right, see you, Cedar Valley. Take care, man. Press Science says, I, I kind of feel that way about the PS1 port of Doom. I think it was quite solid for what it offered. No, it absolutely offered a lot. I mean, PS1 Doom is, is great. I still fire that up a few times a year, like when I'm streaming on Twitch. I'll just, uh, you know, late at night, I'll, uh, I'll fire it up. It's good times. I mean, the fact that it's got so many levels, too, it's got, like, Almost 60 maps. Maybe even a couple more? I don't remember. Don't think there's any more quad damage left. I think I've used it all up. But I will grab this yellow armor. So I kind of want to save my nails for this last part. Uh, you basically get surrounded by two fiends. lightning do I have? 94? Actually, I'll probably just do that. There's one, and there's two. Okay, not too bad. Alright, episode three is down. Gustavo says uh, PS1 Doom has 59 maps, to be exact. Thank you, Gustavo. Vince says uh, PS1 Doom plays really well, too, despite not being designed for analog controls. Yeah, PS1 Doom doesn't even support analog controls, um, and it, it plays really well with the D-pad. Scott says, I've never played PS1 Doom, so <laughs> I'll have to check it out. Yeah, definitely check it out, Scott. Final episode. Splash. <laughs> All right. Quad damage in here.
All right, we jump and bounce our head up against this uh, discolored light. Opens up a door. Or some more quad damage. Let's go ahead and save that, though. So episode 4 has some pretty mean maps. We'll see how we do. Level one down. Let me shoot that glass window. Reveals a switch that opens up these gates. This is where you get your super shotgun. I probably don't have to explain this to anybody, but whenever you change episodes, you basically start back out with just your shotgun. What I'm gonna do is actually go through this hallway and kill everything first. Try to get some infighting going if I want. Are you s okay? That wasn't supposed to happen. Are you? What the hell is going on here? <laughs> I wasn't out in the open that long. Like he shouldn't have uh, tracked me with his projectiles, but whatever. Yeah, if you're out in the open just a uh, smidge too long, the the Vor's projectiles will actually track around corners. Gustavo says, I recently got the N64 version of Quake. It's a pretty good version. Yeah, it's not bad. It could be a little hard to control if you're used to the PC version, but it's, uh, it's a solid version. I like that it actually uses the Quake engine, unlike, you know, the Saturn version. And so it, it feels like Quake, which is great. All right, so I basically grabbed uh, this invisibility which will make the next section a little bit easier. I can just kind of fall straight down here. Oops, I messed it up. It's invulnerability. There's also going to be some quad damage over here. I always try to get rid of that Shambler first, just in case, like, I end up going back to the beginning and I have to fall down again, which does happen. It's not usually included in my route, but you never know. I'm going to play it safe here. I'm 
more quad damage. So this part right here, whichever room you go into is where you appear back towards the beginning. So we want the one with the key, obviously, but I also want this health, and I also want this armor. And if you miss this job, you'll end up back down there with the Shambler, so... That's why I wanted to get rid of the Shambler. Ah, oh, that's a problem. I do not mean to do this! To get rid of this boar just in case. All right, I guess not. <laughs> All right, we're good. That's the end. We. All right, let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and just use our shotgun here. All right, get some quad damage. Alright, and this is where we get our grenade launcher. Right here. We're gonna run out. Otherwise, we might blow ourselves up. Take it slow. To save that quad damage for after I've cleared everything out of this room. <laughs> Gun tanks, his fiends are just huge jump scares for him. Yeah, I mean, they basically are. If there was that one fiend earlier that just it didn't kill me, it didn't even hit me. No, actually, I think it did hit me, but it's just I wasn't expecting it to be there. And uh, I was like, whoa, what the hell? All right, I'm going to use my super shoddy. Actually, let's do our nail gun. It's for this fiend. Which, if you didn't know it was there, it was definitely a jump scare. All right, and this is where the spawn is introduced. Open this up. Yeah, every time you make one of those main doors in that uh, intersection there, one of that, that first intersection, every time you open up one of those main doors, a fiend appears. That's why that fiend was there roaming around. There should be only a finite amount of these guys that spawn out. 
theoretically. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and grab this quad damage. Episode 4 is really cool, because there is so much quad damage. And that's why I wanted that quad damage. Let's go ahead and hit this just to open that up. And we are going to go back because we actually can get access to some red armor. Gun Tank says, uh, whatever noises Trent came up for. Uh, for the zombies jibbing, it's amazing. Yeah, I agree. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the sound effects in Quake are just actually very awesome. Some of it might have been in, uh, like, uh, sample compilations, because I've heard the ogre sounds in multiple different games, and not just games, but like films and and uh, and whatnot. Unless Trent made them and then uh, <laughs> sold them to like a uh, you know sound sample compilation company or whatever. But so many, most of the other sound effects, though, I haven't heard anywhere else, so... Uh, I... Yeah, so I, I got my key, so now we can go ahead and, uh, and exit. There we go. Do a circle around here. Try to just kill these knights one by one. I almost feel bad for the scrags. I'm just kind of like lingering about. Poor scrags. Hashtag save the scrags. All right, we'll come here, get a grenade launcher. This thing right here is actually a healing fountain. So if you lose your health, you can drop back in, get some health back. You know, these later levels, it's definitely a good thing to kind of like take your time. A lot of like dark areas that enemies can hide in, and you can't see them when they're, like, in these shadowy areas. I actually should have saved that armor for later. I Already had almost max red armor. Oops. Shambler time. Could be plenty of those on this map.
Alright, this is gonna drop down, revealing a bunch of fiends. Another pretty dangerous little section. You do start, uh, you know, taking damage if you're underwater for too long, so... You'll see me constantly, like, bobbing back up, just really quick, and that's just so I can, uh, reset my, uh, my air timer. Alright, so, I'm gonna, I don't know, I'm gonna give this a shot. Let's see. Boom, boom, boom. So this is kind of like, sort of cheating in a way, but that's what's fun about Quake. It's all the shortcuts. <laughs> all right, should probably save it. Uh, there is a couple of uh, spawns over here. Our blue bubbly friends. Friends in quotations, I should say. Yeah, let's go this way. Get some quad damage. I'm not going back. <laughs> I forgot I need the damn blue key for that. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't going to risk going back, though. Well, we're not doing the secret level on this, this episode, apparently. Oh, well. Actually kind of funny, I do not have a rocket launcher because I did not pick it up on the previous level. But there is one here on this level. John J asks, have you uh, had any issues with your analog duo and did you fix your Mr. FPGA? Uh, the Mr. I did not fix yet. I definitely want to try to do it sometime soon. Uh, things have just been kind of chaotic here, and then the times where I have had time to technically do something like that, I just seriously have not felt like it, so... Um, unfortunately, I did things kind of backwards. I shouldn't have actually gone this way first. Because I need to come this way. Uh, the Analog Duo, have I had any issues? Um, well, they did finally jailbreak it, so I'm able to... Uh, play cue card games off the SD card, which is great. Because, technically, my EverDrive, my old EverDrive, did not work on it. Um... Oh, that does hurt me. Great. This part does kind of suck. Because there's a wall that just likes to push you straight down here with our bubbly blue friends. 
that want to murder our faces off. Um, but yeah, I mean, the duo's been fine for the most part. You know, they, they did do the jailbreak, so you can do Hue card games off the SD card along with uh, ISOs, which is sweet. Which kind of makes up for my EverDrive not working. However, in the, the very beginning, there was actually a workaround for old EverDrives, where if you load up a Hue card, exit it, and then take it out, put the EverDrive in, go to your library and try to load the Hue card again, it would load the EverDrive. It's stupid, but it worked. Well, one day, uh, it just kind of stopped working. And I think it may have fried my old EverDrive. Because I went to get rid of my old PC Engine Duo today. And uh, I decided, you know what, let me, let me try my old EverDrive on it. Would not work on that one either. It was just giving me, giving me like a constant yellow screen. Uh, which really... What are you doing there? You weren't supposed to spawn there. <laughs> Spawns were supposed to spawn there. Crap, I might actually die here. Ah. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> Whee! Ah, okay. But yeah, those those little issues aside, the duo's been fine for the most part. I mean, uh, I haven't used it much in like the last month because I, I binged it so much when it first came out. But uh, yeah, it's it's good. Now what I'm personally waiting for is DAC support, DAC support. Since I no longer own a uh, regular PC Engine Duo, I, uh... Ah, jeez, these things. Yeah, since I no longer own a regular PC Engine Duo, uh... You know, I have no way of playing it on my CRT, so... I've got no HP. Well, I do have grenades. To say not HP, but no ammo. That's how fried I am right now. Keep in mind, I did work all day before doing this stream, <laughs> and I still plan on streaming on Twitch after this. I want to play some more Dead Cells. I've been playing the hell out of that the last few weeks. Trying to continually make progress at it. See, this is what I get for completely skipping the other level. I didn't mean to skip the level, but I was like, ah, let me try it. Why not? When you're underwater, by the way, you don't want to use the electricity. Otherwise, you will zap yourself and probably kill yourself instantly. However, if you do have uh, invulnerability, you will not kill yourself, which is nice. Actually, what I want to do is shoot this up here. There we go. I can grab that. All right, good deal. Get ourselves a rocket launcher.
All right. I'm going to hit this elevator. Come up through here. And then go this way. I sound like the most generic Let's Player. Yeah, just go this way. Go that way. Now we're going to go this way. And then this way. And we keep going this way. We'll go this way too. Yay. This way. All right, I missed the Mega Health, but I'm not going back out there into that room. That's okay. All right, this is our last main level. Damn it, Spawns! <laughs> He's down there in the water, and I don't want to go down in that water. Of course, I can't see where he is. I can hear him, but I can't see him. I think I actually killed the spawn. Switch one. Switch two. I don't know why I was using the grenade launcher when I could have just used my rocket launcher. I'm definitely zoning out right now, that's for sure. One more level after this. This is a really fun map, though, because, like, there's so much quad damage. You can just really go ham with the quad, the quad damage. It's pretty crazy. Wearing off already. Uh oh. Whoa! <laughs> Get away from me! I actually was not expecting that spawn to be there. back around. Oh, jeez, what did I do? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I just wasted this quad damage. And there's gonna be a Vore up here, and uh, I wanted to use that quad damage on the Vore, but I raised that staircase and it doesn't lower I heard a fiend. Where are you? Do I need a mod that adds spawns everywhere? Uh, no. Definitely not. <laughs> I'll let you play with that. 
Actually, you know what I just realized I could do is actually probably... Look at this. Not a whole lot of points to it, but the, the whole thing is if you were playing like multiplayer, you could be like... Zip? See ya! You know, like really screw with people. It's just one of the things I love about the original Quake is there's so many little things like that. I could rocket jump technically and like get on top of here. But someone like whips around the corner and they probably wouldn't expect me to be up here. Ugh. I wonder if you can actually get to it from here. Let's see. Uh, no, that wouldn't be very fun either, because I'd probably run out of ammo with just Shamblers. Now, if they, like, you know, quadrupled the ammo or something, yeah, I'd be down for something like that. That could be a fun mod. Shambler only run. Well, maybe... Are you serious? I don't even remember all these spawns coming out like this. These spawns have my number. Unfortunately. Let's just get rid of these guys. <laughs> Alright, so I saved this quad damage for last. Two nails. Oh. Yeah, so those boars, they kind of bounce around the place. You have to kill all four of them. Grabbing this stuff really does nothing at this point because there's nothing else to do except grab the rune and exit. All right, all four episodes are done. And now we go on to the, the final level. You've been at this for almost three hours. I was actually expecting this to take less time, but I have been playing a little slow at points, but that's okay. Slow and steady wins the race, right? Or something like that. Even if you play this last level slow and steady, though, it can be kind of a pain in the ass, so we'll see what happens. Ammo is pretty limited. Last one, ladies and gentlemen.
I'd say this is actually probably one of the toughest levels in the game. Primarily because of the ammo starvation. And there's not a ton of health refills either. But this spike ball, we're going to need that later. Realistically, if you want to have the easiest time with this level, you want to try to get the Vores to fight the Shamblers. Those are basically the only enemies on this map. Which is kind of refreshing, actually, because most of the game has tons of ogres and, and whatnot. Unfortunately, I was not able to get... Let's see. Did it work? Nope. Ah, crap. <laughs> see, the Shamblers are firing so quickly that I can't get the Vores to wind up. have just enough ammo for this. No. Oh, that was a bad mistake. Yeah, so there's a spike that comes out of this wall, and I actually got... got spiked by it. Okay, honestly, that actually wasn't that bad. If you hit tab, you can see how many enemies are there. It says there are still six enemies, though. So they haven't spawned in yet. Now, you can actually uh, drop down here. There's a quad damage in that vertical shaft on the other side. But there's really no point in grabbing that. I mean, I guess if you're trying to find all the secrets, there is, but... All right, so we need to go through this teleporter when it's inside the boss, and then that's it. We basically telefrag the boss, and the game ends. Oh yeah, I see Office out there. I think I actually saw you say something earlier. I didn't say hello, but welcome back, Office. Good seeing you again. Ugh.
And that was Quake, ladies and gentlemen. First stream in a while. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I'm not sure if I enjoyed it that much because I started getting really, really tired about halfway through. But I'm glad I made it all the way through. Um, have not been feeling 100% lately, but no one needs to hear that right now. But I'm glad we made it through. And I guess technically I didn't die, but I also didn't do every level. So I'm a little sad. Sadness fills my heart. <laughs> yeah, again, we were using the Quake Spasm source port. Really, uh, really solid source port. Uh, by default, it actually comes with all sorts of filters and graphical options, like enabled. You can actually use the console uh, to, to disable them. There's a uh, Quake-focused website called Quaddicted. Um, like, addicted, but quad instead of uh, addict. Um, so, they actually have a tutorial on how to set up Quake Spasm. If you want to try this source port yourself, um, you know, check out their website and uh, use that tutorial if you want to try to, um, you know, get it to look more like the original Quake. <laughs> Gun takes says, I've always loved it. Some big quack. <laughs> Paralysis by analysis. Welcome back. Uh, great game, but the last level is a bit anticlimactic. Yeah, it is definitely anticlimactic. I mean, uh, the end of every episode is kind of anticlimactic because there's only really one boss of the game. Like one boss that actually attacks you. I mean, I wouldn't even call this last level a final boss because it just sits there. Uh, and you have to telefrag it. So it's more like a puzzle than it is... Well, I mean, technically the first boss is more like a puzzle too. You have to activate switches and avoid projectiles. There's no real shooting involved, but... It still has you, like, dodging stuff at least. But still, it is what it is. It's whatever. But uh, I see Availer with the 499. This is GG. Thank you so much, Availer. And I see Scott Linux with the $10 GG. Great stuff. Thank you so much, Scott. I don't deserve any of that, but I really appreciate it. <laughs> Gun Tank says uh, before Night Dive's port, I'd also uh, totally second recommending um, Quake Spasm as an excellent port. I mean, it still is. It still is excellent. Um. It's definitely what you want to use if you're going to do, like, mods and stuff like that. Like, mods you can't get in the Night Dive port, which there's only a handful of mods in the, the Night Dive port, so... But, um... But, yeah, still a great source port. There's Availers. I know we got the, uh, the normal stream delay on, so it's, uh... takes a little while for those to come in, but thank you so much Availer, much appreciated. And hey, DG! <laughs> DG says, good evening! And apparently GG. <laughs> Thanks again, Scott. There you go. GG, great stuff, he says. Availer says, not feeling great either. I think I'm regretting eating leftovers. I didn't exactly know how old it was. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you gotta be careful with leftovers. I make taco meat a lot, and uh, if I don't eat that within two days, it's like, I have to throw it out. Adam! He says, uh, I was playing Elden Ring and missed all of this. Well, it's all good, dude. Mm. If you want to see some more Dead Cells, Adam, I'll be on Twitch in the... Um I don't know, probably in the next half hour or so. Got my PS5 set up right next to me, and I've got the next three days off work. Oh, man. All right. I'm going to F10 this and exit the game. But, uh, yeah, that was Quake, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. 
And, uh, you know, it's always good revisiting that. Like I said, it's been at least three months since I streamed on YouTube. Uh, uh, so yeah, I wanted to try to like ease my way back in with something that I could just kind of like gracefully zip through without having to really practice or anything, or even think about it all that much. Uh, we had a good chat turnout tonight. Thank you guys for keeping me company. Uh, I will make sure to have this archived, uh, up tomorrow, most likely, and I'll have it time coded to each episode. So, if there's a specific episode you want to uh, see, you can uh, just skip right to it. Anybody that watches the archive, if for some reason there's like a funny moment or whatever, feel free to post a comment down below with the time code to that. That way, people can uh, just jump right to it. Uh, sometimes with these quake streams, like some fun things happen that I don't really notice right away, but some people like see it happening after the fact. Um, and, uh, they'll drop comments sometimes time coding, uh, to that. So if you see that something like that, feel free to drop a comment with the time code. That'd be, that'd be cool. And, uh, yeah. Woo. What a night. What a day. I mean, I've been a busy day. I've been working all day. So <laughs> I've been doing a YouTube stream afterwards. It's something. All right. Guntank says, uh, also, I'm sure it's been brought up at this point, but using the Quake 2 OST on Quake 1 is great. Yeah, I totally agree, Guntanks. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit early on, but uh, yeah, it's actually probably my favorite way to play the first Quake. You know, I really like the first Quake soundtrack, but uh, I actually do prefer playing it with the Quake 2 soundtrack. It's just convenient that, you know, the Quake 2 soundtrack doesn't get copyright claims on YouTube. But the first Quake soundtrack does, so, you know, I can do something I enjoy, but it also, like, there's there's a legitimate reason, uh, alternate reason to do it as well, not just because I like it, so. Availer says, thank you for the stream. Always great to see some legacy PC shooters. <laughs> Crestline says, quack is always great, but I want to try Shrek for quack and see how that is. Uh, Shrek is uh, definitely interesting, uh, Crestline. It is, it is definitely interesting. So actually, if I do this so I actually have uh, Shrax set up here oh that's right it's glitched out um hmm I don't think it's supposed to be like that I don't remember why it's like that um, hold on a second. Let me see if I can change something here. Quake spasm. Let's see. Quake spasm. I think I might have it pointing to the wrong executable. Let's see if this fixes it. Nope. Did not fix it. <laughs> All right, never mind. Um, what I'll probably end up doing is playing Shrek on my Windows 98 machine. I need to get that set up again sometime soon. Because uh, I do have the original disc for this game. I mean, I've got, like, all those expansions I talked about earlier um, in the stream. I, I actually have the physical discs for those. So I'm not sure why it's doing that, actually. That's really odd. But, oh, well, I can't show off, uh, can't show off Shrek. <laughs> it's gonna show off like a, a like the first level or something like that, but that's not happening. Uh, I also want to get the original uh, music set up as well. Let's see if this one works. Yeah, this one's working. Okay, well, this is the X Men mod. <laughs> it's it's really. Uh... So you're in the X-Men uh, headquarters or whatever, and it's really confusing. 
it's actually a huge like map in and of itself. Finding the difficulty selection is is really awkward. So we'll just go with that easy skill, I guess. The war room. I don't even... Okay, there we go. It's actually kind of funny hearing this with the Quake 2 soundtrack. <laughs> and they're still used to some Quake 1 sound effects too. I don't know why I'm killing X-Men specifically. Seems like I should be an X-Men. Killing non-X-Men? Yeah, this this mod has never actually jived with me at all. Honestly, playing it on easy might be the way to go. <laughs> I have done like hard or nightmare or whatever like the hardest setting is on this and it's kind of stupid in terms of like its difficulty. Oh, good classy level design right here. Look at this. Symmetrical columns with a bridge. Four switches because you got to have four switches and not just one. You're right off. This could be evil clones. Either evil clones, or maybe this is like, uh, maybe we're in the danger room or something. I don't know. A little choppy, too. I was gonna say, maybe there is, uh, video options. That's right, because I don't have V Sync on, that's why. actually take that? No. I have to apply changes. Okay. It's weird. I still see some screen tearing. Uh, let's see. Have to shoot that, I guess. I think I've actually got some other ammunition. Yeah, flamethrower. I mean, honestly, this might not be the worst thing. If you played on an easier skill level. And maybe one of these years I'll actually get around to it and actually finish it. But for anybody that doesn't know, this was an actual, like, retail mod. Like, you could buy a physical, you know, box and everything for this game. Whoa. I guess this is my rocket launcher. You can tell Wolverine is clearly like <laughs> using the uh, the fiend logic in a way. Whee! It's Gambit. Machine gun, sort of. It apparently stops after a few bullets. That's ammo. What are you doing, beast? <laughs> it's so goofy. Another Wolverine. Oh, 
Oh, I'm completely out of ammo. Even on easy, I ran out of ammo. Jeez. You know, like, I was thinking to myself, wow, I just need to play it on the lower difficulties and ammo should be fine. You have found the first part of the only weapon able to defeat Apocalypse. You will find other components that have been separated and hidden by Apocalypse. If you're success unsuccessful, the Age of Apocalypse will be unavoidable. Good luck. Press chump when ready. Yeah, office. They are they are way too tanky. Way, way, way too tanky. And I'm already at half health. Wow, that's HP. It doesn't even look like hit points. It looks like ammo of some kind. Why is he so tanky? This is easy mode. Easy mode. Or maybe it's one of those things where, like, only certain types of uh, firepower is useful against certain types of enemies. Kind of like a rock, paper, scissors thing. But yeah. Ravages of Apocalypse is what that mod's called. Yeah, like I said, it that's a that's a retail retail wad. See, if I wasn't so damn tired, I would actually play through Quake Episode Five, which is the one that was done by Machine Games, and it's it's a it's a tried and true Quake One episode. It fits in perfectly with the original Quake. So much to the point where I think it's actually included by default uh, in the Night Dive release. It's just there. So Quake, as the Night Dive release, is technically five episodes. And then there was a new episode created for it. Um, but yeah, this one's also apparently pretty crazy. I have never messed around with it much. I know that once you... Uh, this is like a hub, I think. Go ahead and apply V sync. Okay. All right, later, Scott. Take care, man. Hey, I've got a sub. With sub sounds and everything. Um, holy crap. <laughs> Those are really slow. And of course I can kill myself with them. I had I had to try. Welcome to Malice. Before you begin your mission, explore the academy and experiment with the toys as you encounter. Good luck. Okay. Or you can not experiment. You know, we can just uh, go to the main first level. However we do that, I'm not sure how. It says exit. Wow, the bunny hopping in this is crazy. Whew. You move really fast with it. I don't know if there are any difficulty settings or anything. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> no, I'm gonna hear that again. <laughs> Yeah, this is also available at retail. I have the physical retail disc of this as well. Which is actually how I got all this data. I didn't download these from the internet. These are all from my actual discs. Welcome to Jack and Hero's Teller. 
personal code. We're sorry, no credits available. For more information, press 2. You have pressed 2. More information. For more information, press 3. You have pressed 3. Balancing your cash flow. For more information, press 2. You're gonna use it or marry it. Beat it, ass wipe. <laughs> Dope as you scumbag. I've been looking for you. Uh, damn it. Uh, wouldn't shoot a man in the back, would you? Guess again, ass wipe. Good day. Welcome to Tech A Hero's Teller. Please insert your card. Please enter your personal code. Sorry, no credits available. What the? Bus man still hasn't paid me. Think I'ma pay him a visit. Yeah, it's actually kind of interesting seeing actual like in-game cutscenes in a Quake Quake One engine game. Let him enter. Well, well, damage. What a pleasant surprise. Hey, boss man, where's my money? Your money. Ah, you must mean our little arrangement concerning that cleanup job on Greenland. My money? Where is it? You will get your money soon. Besides, I have another job for you. What makes you think I'd want another job from your stingy metallic ass? Because it pays 20,000 credits upon deliverance. 20 grand, huh? Steal me the plans of the new secret technology at Takahiro Lab. Your money will be waiting. <laughs> Jeez, it's not ending. This is the third cutscene. Look at those super basic buildings. They're so low poly. This could run an Atari Jaguar. No, probably not. <laughs> you put two full polygons on screen in that console and everything chugs. But still, it, it looks very, very basic. You look at stuff like Arcane Dimensions and like the, uh, the geometry is so much more complex. And this is really fast, too. Your movement's like crazy fast. Yeah, yeah you can hold shift to slow down. Reload. Uh... Crap, what's the default for reload? I have no idea. <laughs> it says nothing about reload. Um, okay. Yeah, I have no idea. Let's see if it says anything here in the info. Two differences to the original Quake are the availability availability of utilities and necess necessity for weapon reloading. These require three additional controls: reload, cycle, and use that need to be bound to keys. Bind R reload. The defaults are bound to R, Y, and U. Okay, R, Y, and U. It's not reloading, but maybe I just don't have... Hmm. Yeah, it wasn't actually bound. Okay.
I mean, it definitely seems pretty cool. Like, in terms of gameplay, it seems cool. Way better than X-Men. I mean, I'm, I actually bought this because I heard really good things about it. When I was doing a lot of Quake on Twitch years ago, uh, a bunch of people were like, dude, you gotta try Malice. And I can already kind of see why people uh, feel that way. Whoops. Uh, so Office, uh, you got to remember, I'm using a source port for this. So I'm playing this in a manner uh, that you weren't really meant to play it. Like, you're supposed to use this with the retail version of Quake. And when you do that, it it probably binds the keys by default automatically. But because I'm using a source port, the, the configuration doesn't carry over correctly. Big ass minigun. I was not expecting to extend the stream, but you know, I might as well show off at least like the first level of a couple more mods just to kind of give you an idea of what some mods are like with Quake. I don't even know if there are difficulty settings in this game, though, because when I went through the initial teleporter in the hub, it, uh, it didn't tell me that, like, I had selected easy or hard or something like that. Yeah, so there is a use command, and I need to figure that out. Reload, cycle, and use. Actually, E is probably not good. Binds, U, use. Just because I think I have other weapons bound to Q and E. I need the silver key. Yeah, this is another one I'd like to play on my Windows 98 machine. That way I get the original soundtrack for this as well. Oh, that's... The elevator took too long. Thought I had to activate it in another, another way. I need a key. All six of them. Oh, I can just, like, sit on it and it activates. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> it's a level of interactivity you don't really have in the original Quake. Yeah, this is actually my first time playing an actual, like, level in this game. Not just the, uh, not just the hub. Alright, the question is, what do I do now? Ooh. That was a cool looking, uh, teleporter. Guess that was a secret. <laughs> nice and bright. Going backwards. Uh, 
Oh, that was some bad fall damage. Guess I got my key card. Ooh, missile launcher. Okay. Oh, check that out. Your uh, your basic gun it has um, unlimited ammo. It looks like that's nice. <laughs> cool says, "Is this like a Duke Nukem Forever Quake mod?" No, it's called Malice. It is a Quake mod, but it's called Malice. I've never really put much time into it at all. It's got actual, like, in-game cinematics, too, which is kind of crazy for uh, Quake 1. It says Skill 1 as well, so... There's got to be a way of selecting difficulty on your, um, your hub. Oh, jeez! I'm on fire! So, if you get hit by fire, you continue burning. That's rough. But yeah, that's, that's malice. Hey, Jason, welcome back. That's... That was kind of crazy, actually. <laughs> yeah, so... I've actually done a full Let's Play on this in the past, but if you play Dopa... It's basically the, the Episode 5... And, uh... It's actually really well made. It fits in perfectly with the original Quake. It looks like the original Quake. But it's also... Um, you know, pretty pretty involved for what it is. Like, you can already tell the geometry is, like, pretty decent. I completely forgot how to get to Nightmare. She probably... maybe down here. Yeah. Okay. Interesting it doesn't save the V-Sync option for all my uh, different ports. Well, not ports, but mods. Hey, Woody, welcome back. Headshot. Yeah, this was actually made by one of the guys at Machine Games. Who I want to see the guys in machine games. I think they did the newer Wolfenstein games for id software It was cool to see them make a uh, brand new episode And then uh, it basically made it official I might be going the wrong way.
Quake needs an auto map badly. Yeah, actually, come to think of it, that is one thing about the first Quake, is that there is no map system. Doom had a map system. But, uh, not Quake. It's just level one. Nothing crazy. Yeah, it is. A, it is pretty good level design, actually. So, but yeah, that's just the start of Dopa. It's a full-size episode, you know, like seven to nine maps or something like that. All right, let's see. Uh, so there's another one, Arcane Dimensions. This one is really complex. This is one I've been wanting to try to finish for a long time, but I just haven't gotten around to it. And I think this was actually added to the, uh, the Quake remaster. Well, you can already see how much more complex this looks. That's easy, normal, hard. AD Chapters, 1.5 update. Oh, that's interesting. You click and it actually uh, cycles to a different camera. Oh, this is like uh, not the original game. This must be like its own expansion. Okay. Wow, I mean, look at this. This is actually kind of insane. Everyone, like, raves about this one, and I can, I can kind of see why. Like, just... The texture variety. If you go to this snowy area... <laughs> wow. Very interesting. You're actually, like, outside, outside. Not boxed in like you are in the original Quake. Like, I could jump off and probably die if I wanted to. Actually, very much reminds me of, uh, late game Dark Souls 2. Or Elden Ring.
And they're still using Quake 1 enemies, which is cool. This actually reminds me of Painkiller, like some of the platforming. Right, super nail gun up top, regular nail gun right here. Oh great, we got crawly things now. Actually, this very much feels like uh, a painkiller level. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Excuse me. And gold door, blue door. Oh, it's not blue door. Oh, jeez. No, no. There's multiple key types. More than two, I mean. Ugh. Cool to is uh, I'm doing boring programming stuff and this music makes it sound like I'm hacking into something. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. Maybe I have to go up there. There we go. They're uh, using a shotgun sound that sounds very similar to the one in Quake 3. Yeah, obviously, I was going to say the same thing. I'm already getting flashbacks from Blood. Although, I do like being able to blow up the boxes. Whoa. That was weird. Unfortunately, by using this beefier uh, super shotgun sound, I'm I'm feeling like I should be doing more damage, but I'm not. Stuff like that always trips me up when they change sound effects from these FPSs in, in the mods. I'm so conditioned with the uh, you know the original sounds. That they're they're like linked to how how much damage I do. Probably doesn't make any sense, but I don't know how else to explain it. Okay, so that was just for looks, I guess. Someone clearly played and really, really liked Doom 3. 
or Hexen 2. I don't know. Maybe both. Exactly off is beefier sounds demand beefier damage. I totally agree. Oh no, no, they brought back the Doom Lost Souls. You gotta be kidding me. Couldn't you just leave those guys in Doom? You know, they're irritating enough as is. Beck, <laughs> look at him. <laughs> Even makes the same sound. Or was it using the Scrag sound? I'm having a hard time hearing. No, that sounds like the Lost Soul to me. Very close to it, any anyway. Yeah, the level design is definitely a lot more intricate than anything else we've seen tonight. Oh, okay. We can actually ride on it. the sound of that. What? <laughs> well, I heard the shambler, but I don't know what I got hit by, but yeah. Yeah, that's arcane dimensions. So I've heard some of those levels actually get quite long. So I don't know when I'll ever go and actually really try to mess around with that some more, but it's on my ever-growing to-do list for Quake. But uh, let me see if there's anything else I have here before I bail out. Here's this one called Soul of Evil. I think this was also recommended to me by somebody. I mean, I, I think most of these were. Either recommended by, like, people on stream, or, uh, I went to Quadictic, Quadictig, Quadictid? <laughs> it's so weird to pronounce that. Arena mode, uh, quest mode. And this was probably on, whoa. Oh. Apparently it's got a story, but it dropped me into the world first. <laughs> Many years ago, there was once a peaceful, prosperous land. For centuries, the newcomers to the West had lived in complete serenity, and that's... I started talking too late. I wonder if there's going to be any animation or anything, or if it's just a, a crawl. Now, so since I replaced the the music in the music folder, like it's there's probably music that was supposed to be here and playing, but it's not because I overwrote it with my Quake Two soundtrack. And there was only nine tracks I put in. Uh, ah, that, yeah, that's weird. Oh well, sounds like there's uh, ambience, which is kind of cool. The armory selects the hard skill. Wizard's Hall is the easy skill. Archery selects the normal skill. I'm gonna guess one of these selects Nightmare, maybe? Haha, the attic! <laughs> 
don't think I ever messed around with this one. Yeah, there's gotta be, uh... There's gotta be more music that was included normally. I'll have to have to see about that. Unless they intend you to just use the original Quake soundtrack, I don't know. Well, they're freaky looking. They can already tell these are basically just like different textured enemies, but uh, they still operate the same. Although the Scrags look like they're firing faster now. That's a way of making them more challenging, that's for sure. Says the switch is in a cave. Two sets of doors open. Thanks, game, for spoiling everything. Jeez. Now, that was one of the things about the original Quake, though, is they definitely tried to make it, uh, I think, a little more user friendly. Like, for one, you don't have an activate button in Quake. You just run into switches, and uh, things just open automatically. And two, there's a lot of messages, like on-screen uh, prompts. They kind of, like, guide you in the, uh, the right direction. And this mod is doing just that. Definitely seems like a fairly vanilla style, uh, map. Like, not in terms of, like, the visuals, but in terms of just, like... Hit switch, open door, get key, open door. You know, and the enemy AI hasn't really been altered very much so far. Now, it is early in this, this map set, but... So who knows, like, how expanded it could actually become, but right now it seems pretty... pretty straightforward stuff. Another neighborhood friendly ogre. I still don't have a super shotgun. Oh, that is actually kind of cool, though. I do like how they changed the the laser snipers to nail snipers. So they'll actually drop nails. So you can use your, your nail gun a lot more often. That's nice. Splash. I heard of Vor. Unless that grunt sound effect just got goofy for some reason. Yeah, I really like the guys being replaced with nails, because then you can use your nail gun a lot. That's that's pretty cool. I dig that. It's a good old Quake logo. Baby Quake logo. Adult Quake logo. I wonder if a baby was buried here.
Oh, that is nice how it just loops around. That's good. <laughs> uh oh. Okay, yeah, that's definitely different. Oh yeah, look at that glorious infighting. Yeah, he is unlike anything else in the original Quake. Everything I've been conditioned to do in the original Quake doesn't work in this, though. Like, for secret triggers and whatnot. Knights look pretty cool. Actually, a lot of stuff in this looks pretty neat. Yeah, I probably could have just jumped down. I, yeah, I figured I opened up this door. Oh, I'm jibbing them. And if I jib them, I don't get their uh, their ammo. I open the churchyard gate. Uh-oh. Some of the new sound effects are pretty cool, too. I know they're probably all taken from other games. There's a couple I've heard that almost sound like they came from... Um... Oh, crap. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm not even going to have enough ammo for this. Hmm. Just a piddly old axe. trying to see if there's any more ammo I can get. And I think the answer is no. No more ammo. Oh, I'm going backwards. I don't want to do that. Uh, all right. Well, maybe I can just run past the fiends. Well, there's one. There's another. <laughs> uh, 
Alright, that's lame. Now that uh, is kind of cool though. Uh, I think I'll definitely have to come back to this because it is d definitely more vanilla. Less complicated than uh, like arcane dimensions or something. But yeah, that was Soul of Evil. And uh, I don't know if I've actually got anything else here set up. I don't think I do. Like I've got Aftershock, but I don't think it's actually set up. I don't have a batch file associated with it, so I can't actually get that working right now. But, um, yeah, I definitely got some cool stuff here that I definitely want to get to eventually. Some of it I'm going to have to do on, like, an actual retro PC, like, um, like Shrack, for one. Maybe Aftershock as well. But, uh, yeah, it's still pretty cool. All right, guys, uh, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for hanging out. Um... I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I'm going to try to maybe grab a snack or something. Oh, geez, it's 11 already. Yeah, I forgot I started streaming, like, right as I got off work at 11. So, oh, sorry, 7. <laughs> 7? 11. 7 to 11. Um, so, but, uh, yeah. Thanks again for hanging out. I appreciate it, guys. I'll have the archive up sometime tomorrow, and uh, I'll have it time-coded to each section. And, uh, yeah. Try to be back with another stream sometime soon. Uh, I think I still have one more stream archive from December to post as well. Uh, one thing about streaming so often in December was um, I got to uh, have a lot of stream archives to kind of trickle out over the next month or two. So, um, But one of them was a Doomwad archive, and I forgot to post that. So I'll try to post that sometime soon as well. But uh, yeah, take care, guys. I guess until the next one, uh, take it easy.